it was so lovely to come in to Great Binfields last week and tell you a story in person. And as I said, we're going to continue that story and see what happened when Samuel grew up. How important is the wrapping on your presents? Does it make any difference to what's inside? Do we choose our friends by what they're wearing? I hope not. I hope we choose them because they're nice inside. Today we are going to hear how God went about choosing a new king for his people. I wonder who God will choose. Let's open the book and read Samuel, the Kingmaker. Last week I told you the story of when Hannah wanted a baby and she prayed and she prayed and she prayed. God gave her a baby and she named him Samuel. When he was old enough, Hannah took Samuel to Eli the priest as she had promised. Each year she returned to visit him and took him new clothes. With God's help, Samuel led God's people. But when Samuel grew old, the people asked him for something that made him sad. Everyone else has a king, the people said, so why can't we have a king too? Samuel told God about this. God made him feel better. It's not you they don't want, God said. It's me. I'm their true king, but sometimes they just can't see it. So tell the people they can have a king if they want, but tell them the truth. Tell them that it won't make their lives any easier. So that's what Samuel did. God says you can have a king, he told the people, but he wants you to know what that means. A king will turn your sons into soldiers, your daughters into housemaids, and your grain and your golds into gifts for his special friends. In other words, he will make you his slaves. It didn't sound very nice. But the people still wanted a king, so Samuel found them one, a tall, handsome man named Saul. Saul did well for a while, but then he stopped listening to Samuel and he stopped obeying God. So God told Samuel to find another king. Go to Bethlehem, God said, and find a man named Jesse. If the people must have a king, then it should be someone who loves me, trusts me and follows me. That someone is one of Jesse's sons. So Samuel went to Bethlehem and met Jesse and his sons. And when he laid eyes on Jesse's oldest son, Eliab, Samuel was sure that Eliab was the one and God was sure too that Samuel was wrong. He may be tall, God said, but so was Saul, and remember how that turned out. And then God said somewhat something very important. You can only see what people look like on the outside, Samuel, but I can look inside them, deep down into their hearts, and it's what's on the inside that matters most to me. So Samuel moved on to Jesse's other sons, while God looked into their hearts. How about the second son, said Samuel. No, said God, try again. The third son? Afraid not, said God. The fourth son, said Samuel. No way, said God. The fifth son, asked Samuel. 
You must be joking, God replied. The sixth son, Samuel queried. Not a chance, God said. The seventh son, asked Samuel. He's the only one left. You'll have to look harder, said God, because he's not the one either. I don't suppose you have any more sons, Samuel asked Jesse. Well, there is the youngest, Jesse answered, but he's out in the fields looking after the sheep. Fetch him, said Samuel, quick as you can. And when the boy appeared, God whispered to Samuel, that's the one. His heart is pure and true and he longs to follow me. So Samuel poured oil on the head of Jesse's youngest son as a sign that God wanted him to do something special and that one day he would be king. And the youngest son's name was David. Well, that was a surprise. I would have expected one of those big, handsome sons to be chosen as king. Not David, who could have easily been overlooked. Over the next few weeks, we'll be hearing stories about how David became one of the most famous kings in the Bible. Do you remember what God said to Samuel? God said he looked at what people were like on the inside not how good looking or how strong they were. Think about a time when you have forgotten to look on the inside of someone and have only cared about the outside, what they look like or the things they had or didn't have. Think about what that person was really like on the inside. Now I'm going to say a prayer and if you want to make it your prayer, say Amen at the end after me. Thank you God that the important part of us is what's on the inside, in our hearts and in our thoughts and not what is on the outside. Amen. <laughs>